So to show you, show you uh, these, these widgets in action on mobile devices, we took the expense report app that you saw. We uh, customized it just a little bit to adapt it to each of a couple of different devices. And uh, so here I've got an iPad. So this is the, the same app. Let me connect to the network here. This wireless network is my friend. And it works the same way that you would expect it to uh, from, the, from what you saw previously. And it does all you know, small adaptations so that it, it feels more appropriate for the device. So you know, finger dragging and things like that. But I can still page just the same way. Basically the same app. I'm reusing almost all the same code. So that is on um, an iPad. And Ben has a version that is running on Android. Indeed. And over on this Android version, we have the same sort of UI gestures that you'd be expecting. And we have a, a, a nice interface, and it's very easy to use. So we thought what we'd do is we'd show you how it works, and you'll see some of the cool features in the new widgets. So why don't I log an expense report? I've been here at Google I.O. I've been actually here for a week now, but I've been working really hard. I've been working really late hours. So I'm going to have dinner, and I think I'm going to log an expense report and have a good dinner. Wi-Fi. So we type in dinner. And I've had a good dinner. So let's finish typing it. One hundred and fifty dollars. Excellent. So I must qualify. I'm not sure Wi Fi is going to work for us at the moment. So we, we should see this work, but we we disclaim. So I'm going to hit the done key on the count of three. One, two, three. And have a look over at Bruce's machine, and we'll see if Wi Fi is being good to us. Double check the done. Did you, are you sure you, you nailed that? We probably should enlarge those buttons the next time we do this. <laughs> Let's connect. It's worth waiting for. It's worth waiting for. This is a great demo. OK, back to internet. So let's try this again. Refresh. <laughs> we can't plug Ethernet into these ones, unfortunately. So if you, well, if this doesn't come back in a second, we will describe to you in extreme detail, <laughs> pixel by pixel, what, uh, what you would be seeing were the network not completely overloaded right now. In fact, maybe we should just do that. Let's do one last attempt. One last try. You know, we should use that HTML5 app cache feature. We of should course, add that. We, the whole point we'll actually, <laughs> the whole point actually is that uh, you see two different views of the app here, and both of the apps are live. Let's okay. Let's see if if we can pull this off. No. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh, hang on. We're okay, up. Okay, okay. Here okay. we go. So, delete the last two minutes. Okay. <laughs> OK, so uh, I've been working hard at Google I.O., Rewind, and I've been doing lots of work, and I've had a good dinner. So let's try, and add the, let's try and add the dinner together, and you'll be able to see these new widgets in action. So let's press the plus key. I've picked, and it was dinner. And as I said earlier, we've been having a good dinner. The joys of working late. OK, and what we wanted to show you and it does require internet, so here we go. I'm going to press done on the count of three. One, two, three. And have a look over at Bruce's screen. <laughs> yay! <laughs> yay, yay, yay. OK, so you saw that pop in. Uh, now, I like, and I like that. I like that. But what I do not like as, you know, Ben's pretend manager here is 
$150 for dinner because I had assumed he was going to go fast food. This is not working for me at all. So I'm going to deny this. And I am going to say that you, Ben, are nuts. I don't know if you can read that. It says you are nuts. I'm going to confirm. And one, two, three, we should see uh, network willing that Ben has been now updated in real time. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Versus maybe your, your normal expense report cycle where your boss sits on it for, you know, six weeks. My, what, my dinner was rejected? It's a good thing I'm still here. I haven't left it. Okay, so uh, I am nuts. Okay, so let's, let's amend it then. So let's go and edit. Let's backtrack. And I'm not going to round the bill up this time. $148. <laughs> and because I can't calculate tax here in California, so I'm from Australia, I don't know what the total will be, but 148.13, and done on the count of three. One, two, three. And... Come on, you can do it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's right. Oh, 148.13. Now, that is a different story. I mean, that's, that's nothing. That's jump change. Sure. No problem, Ben. <laughs> Ben, thank you. That was fantastic. So, uh, well, anyway, uh, aside from the network glitches, um, <laughs> look, uh, let's let's talk let's talk about the whole arc that you've just seen. Right? We started with an empty directory. Two hundred keystrokes later, you have an app. You have a powerful set of tools that helps you iterate quickly. You've got a nice widget library, an app framework to help you build apps that work very responsively even against huge data sets that are running in the cloud. You've got performance tuning tools that, that are great for diagnostics both on your desktop and in the cloud. And then you've got the knowledge that these applications that you're building with the tools that we're talking about here can be easily adapted to all the different mobile devices that your users are actually using. We hope you'll try these out. We're really excited about all of these things that are coming in GWT 2.1 and Spring Roo and STS. A lot of great stuff. Please do download it and let us know what you think. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And again, if you want to hear more, want to see these things in action, try them yourself. The sessions, attend the session, talk to the engineers, download the code. You can build apps like that. You can have your own demo fun with your own applications that you've built on these open tools. Do your own innovation. The third thing we said we were going to show you is flexible deployment. We've been showing you how to build these great web apps, but what do you do when you build them? How do you make sure you're not locked into one architecture when you're building them? Well, the answer is, because you're building on open standards, you're not locked in. You've actually been seeing, over the last few demos, you've been seeing cloud portability in action. The first few demos you saw, built with one tool stack, open standards, were running on a development server right here on the development box. You then saw some demos when Bruce started showing you Speed Tracer using Insight. You saw those same demos, same application, deployed to a virtual machine running on a VMware instance using TC Server. And then you saw some of the same demos running on Google App Engine. Same application using Google App Engine and saw Speed Tracer tracing across that. And how do you as a developer make that decision? What do you change in your app to do these different deployments? Well, Bruce showed you if you want to deploy your app to Google App Engine, you're in Eclipse using the tool set. You click on the button, you're deployed to Google App Engine. But because this app is built on the open standards, the Java Container API, Java Persistence API, if you want to deploy to any of the other open standard supporting environments, drag, drop, deploy your project to any server that supports these standards behind your firewall, in the cloud. It all just works because open standards lead to innovation. So we've shown you how to use familiar tools to build apps quickly, how to have those apps work everywhere you want, both every device you want, and deploy them on every architecture you want. That means you're now going to have a lot of apps. And if you have a lot of apps, you need to have tools to manage your applications in the cloud. I'd like to welcome Kevin Gibbs, the lead of the Google App Engine team, to show you what's happening in Google App Engine to help you work with all the applications that you need. Thanks, everybody. Now, today, you've seen some examples of Google's approach to helping with enterprise software. 
Now, we don't believe in silver bullets or single solutions. 